Welcome to the Stairway to Heaven. We're coming to you on Exxon TV and Simul TV from our broadcast studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada, with the latest updates on the increasing frequencies impacting us all. Stairway to Heaven is the source of vital information for the evolving human being. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. It feels like dying. This is probably one of the most intense Stairway to Heaven episodes to date. No wonder, as energetically speaking, we're undergoing the most transformative time in recorded history. It's also very confusing since no two people are responding to the rapid increase in energy in the same way or at the same pacing. Even the recent pandemic did not carry the impact of the current and upcoming influences. The planet and everything on her is in the process of undergoing radical transformation on all levels. To understand what we're experiencing and why, we first need to look at the concepts hidden in the Mayan calendar. We're revisiting a subject that's been cussed and discussed for decades. Just because concepts contained with the Mayan calendar have been subject to much, much hype and hysteria, such as the idea it predicted the end of the world, doesn't mean the calendar itself is not accurate and valuable. The Mayan religious practitioners were both mathematician and shaman. They employed a system called the Long Count Calendar to compute his cosmic and historical cycles. The Mayan calendar placed mathematical values upon the emerging patterns of varying galactic frequencies, thereby creating a model for divining the course of human history. The Mayan pyramid is a physical representation of a single cycle in the calendar and will aid us in understanding what we are now experiencing. The Mayan calendar tracks the varying influences humans are subject to as a solar system moves through the galaxy and the galaxy moves through the universe. One cycle in the calendar begins at the base of the pyramid and moves up nine tiers. Each of these nine tiers is divided into segments, which are also referred to as days and nights. Days carry a positive electrical charge, while nights carry a negative one. The crossover between days and nights forms an X point and is neutral. There are seven days and six nights per tier, adding up to 13 divisions. Each tier is divergent from all the other tiers in the cycle. For example, the first day on the first tier is not the same as the first day on the second tier. The amount of time spent in each day and night decreases with each rising tier of the pyramid, resulting in a compression of the time spent in each and more rapid shifts from one polarity to another. If we view this entire cycle as the one we're currently in, the first age represented by the first tier or ground level of the pyramid, began approximately 10.4 billion years ago. At that time, each day and each night was around 1.26 billion years long. The ninth tier began around February 2011, with each day and each night in this tier spanning about 20 days. At the level of the first tier, while a single day or night spanned millions of generations, the ninth tier movement from a day to a night occurs approximately every three weeks. However, at this point, it would appear we have accelerated until we're experiencing switches from day to night multiple times a day. The faster we move through days and nights, the more expansive the frequency we're subjected to. Therefore, each generation is exposed to more influences than the previous generation. During the time of the first tier, where each day and each night was 1.26 billion years long, the ramifications of a single action did not have an effect for many generations. This multi-generational delay between action and result is the genesis of the expression that one's actions will affect one's descendants until the seventh generation. Now, however, we're repeating the re reaping the rewards of our actions almost immediately. <laughs> Instant karma, if you will. Another phenomenon caused by the acceleration of time is the ever-expanding concept of truth. When things were changing very slowly, reality was like a single frame image or a photograph as opposed to a motion picture or video. We can apply all sorts of interpretations to a still image that can be proven false when we see a sequence of pictures in motion. 
When we are in the day cycle, where the overall influence has a positive charge, we can build up coping mechanisms, judgments, and beliefs that are polarized and cannot transcend the neutral zone at the X point between day and night. Thus, as we move from day to night or night to day, pressure is brought to bear on all our imbalanced defenses, behaviors, and beliefs, as anything polarized or not in balance cannot pass through the neutral X point. Passing through an X point is a purification process, rather like being pressed through a sieve. We either shed what's not the truth of our true essence at that frequency, or we don't pass at all. In addition, as we move forward, the sieve becomes finer and finer with less tolerance for impurities. There's more in-depth explanation on these concepts in the book So We're Still Here Now What? Spiritual Evolution and Personal Empowerment in a New Era, which is available on Amazon. Suffice it to say, we're about to hit a brick wall, personally and in mass. In the past, we had plenty of time to review and process all that was coming up to be cleared as we approached the neutral zone found at the X point between day and night. However, at the accelerated pace we are now experiencing, there's little to no time available to do so. To the degree that we as individuals or as cultures have stayed in contact with Earth's rising frequency and processed accordingly, we're confronted with less that needs to be cleared as we pass through the neutral zones. This makes the increasing refinement less challenging, granting some more grace than others. There are also generational and racial restrictions passed down through the genetic line to be considered during these passages. With all the variables, it's no wonder two, no two individuals are experiencing the shifts in the same way. When the differences, there also exists a theme du jour whereby similar issues are being brought up at the same time. This is what the Stairway to Heaven episodes are based upon. By tracking the themes in common, I offer guidance as to what we may be confronted with at any given time. The impact of the shifts on the individual can vary from a small blip on the radar to total disintegration. Even these responses, or seemingly lack thereof, can come from totally different causes. The one feeling little impact may have dedicated themselves to processing, or they may have put everything into denial and therefore do not consciously experience it. However, the deeper our denials, the less we process, and the less of our expression can pass through each transition, a case of greatly diminishing returns. There used to be room for this approach, now not so much, thus the brick wall I mentioned. There will soon be a time of this far and no further. That's not to say any approach is right or wrong. We each came with our own purpose and intentions and have made personal choices along the way. All of this combined will dictate personal outcome. Even the outcome will shift as we do. One thing applies to all of us. Even though what is true at one frequency becomes partially true at another, these are the days the truth can't hide. There will come a point when we can no longer move forward with our imbalances, polarizations, and denials intact. When that point is reached, we'll be forced to shed all that is not of the truth and in integrity at the next frequency or not move forward at all. We may stop, but life does not. As the frequency on the planet surpasses that to which we are holding, the discrepancy between, between the two becomes an acid bath. In this case, we'll destabilize on all fronts until we can no longer remain incarnate in this reality. Choosing to not make a decision or commitment to evolution is a decision in itself. Nothing remains the same. We'll either evolve or devolve, and at this frequency, it'll happen very quickly. Among the symptoms caused by transitions is physical illness. Maybe even the pandemic can be attributed to this on the spiritual causal level, regardless of where it physically came from. Emotional impacts such as despair, despondency, depression, dis depression or anxiety are part of the equation. Neurological influences can manifest as sudden dizziness, disorientation, and apparent gaps in time. Old memories may emerge seemingly out of the blue, and so on. 
In the past, the tried and true solution was to heal. This was done through accessing the issues, judgments, and damage as they were forced to the surface. Once recognized, these distortions could be processed, reevaluated, and transmuted. This would result in a reduction of restrictions and a rise in frequency, facilitating a successful passage through the current X point. Very soon, we'll be moving faster than the mind can follow. This will leave us without the time or the luxury to process the old way. At that point, we must just trust and let go, even when we do not understand. Much like a caterpillar and crustaceous, all that we have been identified with must liquefy and be filtered to form anew. It can feel like dying, as things we are closely identified with and highly invested in cannot make the transition and must be shed. As we undergo this advanced process, when memories, feelings, thought forms, and judgments float to the surface, it's important to realize they are just showing up in the increasing light. They've always been there in the shadows, running amok in our lives. Some we may still need to process. Some we may need to act upon. But many we can simply acknowledge and let go dispassionately as if we were simply watching the movie of someone else's life. Acknowledgement is a vital step, as without it we're going into denial. And we've already examined the long-term ramifications of that approach. However, once acknowledged, we may not need to process them so much as release our identification with them and let them go. The model of the Mayan calendar most often presented leaves the impression that the calendar ended on December 21, 12, 2012. Yet, recent discoveries dispute this belief. An astronomical calendar was unearthed from a filled-in scribe's room in the ruins of Izutun, Guatemala, that indicates the Mayan calendar extends well beyond this date. Since everything in nature is cyclic rather than linear, I propose that around the date December 21, 2012, we entered the 10th tier of the Mayan pyramid, where time is accelerated to become nearly unified. This period of unity marks the end of an entire cycle, the fourth world, only to begin again at the next cycle, another pyramid upended on the top of the first pyramid. Instead of Armageddon, the prophesied end of the world represented a time when we came to the end of the influence holding the fourth world together. We're entering the energetic matrix with new frequencies that support the fifth world. The end of days or end of linear time is when we enter unity or the neutral point as we pass from one overlording polarity or pyramid to another. The neutral point between polarities is characterized by the eternal present. This repeating equal but opposite positive and neg negative cycles of ascension and dissension and resulting expansion and contraction follow natural law in accordance with the rest of life. It's up to us whether we choose to follow natural law and live or cling to the fading reality and die with it. We are dying to our old identifications or we're dying with them. Yes, if we remain identified with our distortions, it indeed feels like dying. Because it is. Thank you for joining me, Gwilda Wiecka, on the Stairway to Heaven, where we provide updates on the energetic currents facilitating our evolution into conscious, powerful co-creators. As I'm sure you've noticed, not only do the Stairway to Heaven episodes stand alone, but they weave together to form a map to evolution and personal empowerment as we enter the new era. To revisit this or any of our past episodes, visit our archives at www.stairwaytoheavenmedia.com. If you'd like to find out more about me, my school, and the evolutionary tools we offer, visit www.findyourpathhome.com. Until next time, may you be blessed on your sacred path to wholeness. We are here. The time is now.